about seven years ago, I was taping with Antiques Roadshow in Arizona somewhere, and a gentleman walked in with two pieces of pottery by Peter Volkos, typical of his earlier work, Japanese-inspired, hand-thrown, earthenware pieces with brush-painted flowers. He'd known uh, Shoji Hamada, uh, the Japanese master, the, the uh, national treasure, and was deeply inspired by him. And this is what typified Volkos's early work as a potter up until about the early 50s. What was fascinating about these pieces was the story behind them. The gentleman, it seems, worked in Greenwich Village at a, I don't think we can call it a new age bookstore, but a pretty hip bookstore at that time. And Volkos had come into New York City with these pots and a number of other ones that he'd given the man to sell in the bookstore. They did that. They worked with local artists and they made some money selling the art that the artist brought in and the artist got some pocket change. And, and these were two that hadn't sold and the man kept them all these years. So uh, he, as he further explained the story, the reason Volkos was in New York City was because he had been teaching with Franz Klein at the Black Mountain College in North Carolina and followed Klein to Manhattan to meet the abstract expressionists of which, of whom, Klein was one, and uh, these pots were a, a, a point of divergence because they were what got Volkos to New York City, and then suddenly he cast that aside, hanging out with people like Pollock and Klein and whoever else is working there, and then he created something like this, which is totally different. And as such, Volkos became to ceramic what Klein and the abstract expressionists were to oil paint, and it really marked a, a, a critical point, not just for Volkos' work, but for what the concept of decorative ceramics in America was at that time and would become. Uh, another fascinating point about Volkos was that he died fairly young. He died in his 70s, but he died about a decade ago. And unlike most aging artists, his work just got better and better as he aged. And this pot behind me, called Anastasi, was made in 1999. Uh, a magnificent seven-foot-tall stack piece with all of the bells and whistles one looks for in Volkos's work, including his hands jammed into the side and pieces are cut out in one place and stuck someplace else and uh, very macho, very expressive and very powerful. And of the best of these, Volkos made bronze castings. Nine Anastasi bronzes were made. Uh, most of them made posthumously by the same man who made them with Volkos while he was still alive and we're really quite honored to have one of these masterpieces coming up in our June Modern Sale 2014. I hope you come look at it, free to the public, come hang out, but not the least of which is Anastasi the Bronze. Thank you.